Hey guys, I'm near Chamonix Creek State Park in Pennsylvania. A little bit of a cold, but I'm doing my best. Super excited to check out this thing. Look at this, it's the Sunseeker Fat Tad. And I'm assuming that stands for like fat tire, tadpole style bike. Um, Sunseeker, uh, it's, they, they make this all on their own, this bike, but Electric Bike Technologies has seamlessly integrated their kit. You can actually see e-bike kit printed on the battery pack back there. And they've just done such a great job turning this into an electric trike, uh, making it a ton of fun. You know, as you, as you might know or might have guessed, when you put these larger tires on and, and you build a trike with full suspension like this has, it ends up being a little bit heavier. And you know, pedaling is, is great. And in fact, you get a lot of aerodynamic efficiency by having a recumbent because your body's not blocking as much of the air but it's still a lot of work you know and in in my opinion it's really neat to have the option to be able to um, use a trigger throttle like this one has right here on the right grip or pedal assist so this has five different power levels or you can just turn it to zero and use this really awesome display it's just like a fancy cycle computer. So I've, I've just been loving this thing. It's, it's I, even the color, you know, look at this is the frame. It's like gloss red. And then we've got these awesome punched out rims with a red liner just for that extra little accent. Um, before I get too much into all the characteristics, I want to call out some of the beefier upgrades I noticed. You can see there's a little kind of a metal hanger thing that's I think designed to help prevent any, you know, side damage on the derailleur. It also looks like they've got uh, a really heavy duty torque arm back here because this motor is rated uh, from 500 watt nominal uh, up to like a thousand watt peak, 45 newton meters of torque, which is pretty awesome for a hub motor like that. And we can kind of come up here to the front of the bike, sliding boom. Even the seat can be mounted in a few different positions back here. So I have these longer legs and we were actually kind of messing with this, bringing the seat back, sliding that boom out a little bit. You can even angle the seat and check this out. At first I didn't even notice, but you've got bottle cage bosses here, another pair right here, another pair right here, <laughs> another pair right here. So you could be loaded up with water or with maybe like a folding lock or a mini pump or whatever. And of course you've got the rack back here as well. Standard gauge tubing, nice paneer blockers so they aren't gonna drag on those fat tires. Just really love that. And then up here, of course, you could have a trunk bag. It says it's rated at 25 kilogram max weight. That's about 55 pounds. You know, that's a lot of weight, but the battery pack that's on here, I was wearing this earlier, it's about nine and a half pounds, 9.3 pounds, I believe. So you're already taking some of that capacity it is mounted up pretty high you know they've had to use these special attachment points just to get it get it on there and you know if you shake the back of the bike there's a little bit of play just because you know there's turning happening up there but we have that pivot point for that rear suspension so i think i would i'd go a little bit more limited or you know if you can put paneers on that's better because it keeps the weight low versus way up high it's felt super stable to me, just you know, pedaling around and stuff. I've gone up and down a few little bumps. And even if this didn't have suspension, the tires being four inches wide, you know, these are 20 by four, they give you a lot of cushion. They say maximum inflation, 20 PSI. You know, I, I've seen a bunch of fat bikes over the years, and a lot of times they say, you know, five to 30 PSI. So I definitely wouldn't go over 20. But if you're on sand, if you're taking this on the snow or something, dropping it down a little bit gives you a little bit of a, a larger um, contact patch for better, better traction, and it just spreads out your weight, and so you don't sink in as much. So those are some, you know, fat bike specific tips for you. Love that this comes with, you know, a little bit larger pedals. These are kind of the Welgo platform. They are just plastic, but the nubs are pretty nice. I think that's actually a pretty good pretty good choice for them you know they are trying to keep this a little bit more affordable I think they're you know it's kind of one of a kind in some ways but the uh, the price it's like 24 35 so you know you're around that $2,500 mark for a custom-built recumbent fat bike 
with disc brakes. That's one of the other highlights here, 160 millimeter. You've got one on the right and on the left, so you can kind of brake independently, and maybe help the way that you're turning and handling. Be a little bit careful. I noticed that if you turn really, really sharply, really sharply, you can actually come into contact with the seat. That's a really sharp turn. I mean, you would not want to turn that fast if you were you know, going upwards of five miles per hour, but that's just one of those little takeaways for you. I love that they've got these tubes here. It keeps the chain from getting your pants and stuff all greasy while you're riding. A couple little pulley wheels back here just to keep them keep the chain raised enough, give you decent ground clearance. Pretty tight derailleur. This is SRAM X4. Got an eight-speed sprocket in the rear. I think this is 13 to 28 tooth. We were looking at that earlier. And then three sprockets up front. So that's pretty awesome. This is a 24 speed bike, but I was noticing that, you know, because they've got that 12 magnet cadence sensor right here, it, you know, it kind of blocks that smallest sprocket. I've just been using the two larger sprockets and that's been fine. You know, a lot of electric bikes only have like a 10 speed cassette in the rear and one sprocket up front. So having even two is nice. I'm pretty sure that you could also kind of readjust this, and I've actually talked to the team about potentially mounting it to the other side. I love that this is the kind of cadence sensor that you don't have to take the cranks off or anything. You can actually just remove that metal clip and then clip it on. So I, I don't want to make, you know, pass any judgments. Um, but even if you did only end up with a couple of sprockets, I think that's still pretty awesome. 170 millimeter cranks. We've got this really interesting kind of fancy um, display mount up here. It does pivot sort of forward and back so you can reduce glare. It's fairly large, so even if you're back here, you can still see how fast you're going. You can see those battery increments. At first I was like, wow, look at how many battery increments. They kind of fade away in, in five chunks, so you get 20% increments overall. And again, those five levels of power. And I say power instead of assist, because it, that really dictates not only how much power you're getting in assist, but also with the throttle. So if you want to go a little bit slower, maybe you're in a crowded location or there's a speed limit or something, you can. And I mentioned speed limits because this thing is actually capable of going like 26, 27 miles per hour. You get a lot of adjustability with that display and it's, it's actually pretty neat how it works. If you, uh, if you hold the up button, it, it backlights too. So that's another little tip for you. Um, I'm here with Alec and you're kind of a, a lead engineer Hi. at Electric Bike Technology, right? Hi. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, you know, we were talking earlier and you were giving me all this great feedback about how to change the display and how you've set these custom battery curves and everything. Is that yeah. right? Am I saying yeah. that right? Yeah, yeah. The, the display is, is matched to, to suit the discharge curves of, of each of our batteries. So you get fairly accurate battery display with our batteries but you also get the option to reprogram it for any other battery that you might be using so if you have your own battery or if you've bought a battery from someone else you can change the voltage set points in the screen uh, just through the menu in order to get a good battery reading on a different kind of battery so it's it's an open system but it also works seamlessly with all of our own products nice man i like you know this is this is where it gets pretty technical i think maybe in layman's terms i was trying to just just break this down to like its simplest terms yeah. and and what my understanding is that you know each battery functions a little bit differently yep. and the voltage drops over time as yep. you're using it and yep. so the closer you can kind of dial in the display yeah. and its settings to the actual battery well the more accurate the the battery readout's going to be exactly right and yeah. and you're saying yeah core i mean like not only is it matched to the bike battery it comes with yep but you could do a, a custom a different battery maybe in the future you replace the battery or exactly. something like that yeah and i i love that because coming back to the heritage of the company you've got electric bike technologies like this parent company and then there's like e-bike kits yep and they may make kits so you could do this just on your own trike. And there's even a DIY section of electrictrikes.com. Yeah. Is it electrictrike.com? Electrictrike.com. Electrictrike.com. Yeah. You could go there and you could say, hey, I already bought the Fat Tad, you know, before I knew that you could get an electric one, but I want to make mine electric. You could work with your shop. You could buy the kit mm -hmm. and they could 
or you could, you know, transform it. Exactly. And and furthermore, you could buy it completely built like this. So I mentioned the price earlier for an additional three hundred and fifty dollars. That's shipping in the contiguous U.S., meaning like the mainland yep. U.S. Anywhere in the forty-eight states. Anywhere in the yeah. forty-eight states. For for that much extra, you get this already built, customized by someone on your team, right? <laughs> right, and, and ready to ride as well. It comes in a, in a pretty gigantic box by Motor Freight. That's why the ship is, is expensive. Yeah. But when you get it, you don't have to do anything. You just cut the box open and it's ready to ride. The key's already in the battery, so you just turn it on yeah. and you're ready to go. You don't have to, to adjust anything. That's phenomenal. That's, it's really nice to be able to, especially something that's this big. After we did weigh this, yeah. you know, we weighed we the did. battery and it weighed the bike, and it's about 80 pounds which is a little less than I expected. This is all chrome ollie steel, um, which means it's gonna really be tough. And also maybe a little bit more comfortable. And you've already got those fat tires, but steel tends to be a little, I don't know, there's just, there's something about it compared to aluminum. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a really great ride. The, the high quality frame, I mean, you, you talk about steel bikes. Traditional people love steel bikes because, you know, they can be lightweight, but they're also comfortable. They, they flex appropriately and, and they ride really nicely. Very cool. Well, coming back to the battery, it is removable. So that's one way to reduce weight. We just got, you know, nuts on that back axle. And you were saying that's pretty wide, like the rear axle. Yeah, it's a 190 millimeter axle. It's a, it's a new standard fat bike rear so it's 190 millimeters and the motor on this bike actually we designed specifically for this bike when we started converting these we had bike shops calling asking for motors for this bike and we realized we're going to have to make a motor just for this bike and when we did it though we made a motor that's going to fit just about any fat bike okay. so it'll fit 170 to 190 millimeter fat bikes where would people get that is that back to e-bike kit so that's available from e-bike kit and we, we've been making uh, electric bike conversion kits since 2010 so we have a lot of experience but the fat bikes are a little newer to us and um, that, that motor is available from e-bike kit but it uh, was, what's the URL? Like, is are there any dashes or anything? Um, it's just ebike kit. E b i k e k i t dot com. Okay, thank you. You yeah. know, just <laughs> it's nice to make make sure we don't have any confusion here. Um, I did so. Back to the battery. It's removable. It's proven. They've been, you know, it's lithium ion, by the way, which tends to be lighter, longer lasting. Forty eight volt, ten amp hours. So you're you're getting, you know, good power. And I think you were saying one of the one of the adjustments that we can make with that display is yeah. you can take it from what did you say like 20 down to six? Yeah, down to amps? six amps. So if yeah. you wanted to limit your current a lot, you can set a max limit, and we'll do that with a, a lot of special needs customers even. So if you if you need for some reason to go slower mm -hmm. because you're say you're riding um, in tight spaces yeah. or you have trouble balancing you can turn down the current, but you can also do it on the fly just using the arrow pad yeah. on, the, on the display. Yeah, and that's the thing. Which is mounted on the handlebars here. So right now we've got it up here on five, and you can turn it down as you go, and that will limit your power and your max speed through the throttle and the PAS. Yeah. But you can also set it permanently permanently in the screen by going in the menus and saving it. And you can you even disable, you can disable yep you know the throttle mode right you could disable pedal assist mode right if that bothered you I yep. mean, without there, unplugging it or anything you can just turn it off so you can use one that's so other. cool i was i was kind of surprised you know a lot of times i'm doing these reviews and maybe it's the youtube crowd but they're like faster faster yeah and you were like no the the request that we actually get is slower yeah, slower a lot of the times a lot of people that we talk to are riding recreationally and for fun they're not trying to set speed records they're just yeah. trying to enjoy themselves okay and in a lot of cases going a little slower is safer especially if you're going off road or we we have a lot of customers who have different disabilities and have trouble balancing and it's good to go slow in that case as well yeah um so more control over what you're doing, more so than, you know, 28 miles an hour is really fast enough most of the time. That's really fast. But it, it is kind of cool that once you got it all set up, even if it was just out of the box, maybe most of the time you're riding with it in like level two, level three. Yep. And then occasionally you get this nice, you know, it's not busy here. It's really smooth road and you could take this up and you could zip through, oh, you yeah. know, hit those higher speeds. So let me, I'm gonna dive back in here um, you do have to leave the, the key in the battery. That's a complaint I make sometimes with electric bikes where it's like, ah, oh, the key's in the way, it could get kicked and stuff. In this case, it's way out of the way and, and they've got this nice folding key. And in fact, if you take it out, look at that. It's kind of one of those like inward routed keys that's really fancy. 
So we just put it in, turn it, now it's on again and it folds down. And you know, you, you don't have to have a keychain on it. It's just, if you did, it could be rattling around a little bit. That's one of my, you know, question marks sometimes. I've got a couple little mounts back here. Depending on where you live, some places make you have a little license plate for your bike if it's a speed pedelec. But you could also use that for mounting a light. A lot of people also, you know, use these bars and stuff kind of at the front for adding lights for safety. And the handlebars on this, you were saying, what did you call them? What was the style? Um, I don't know. I think it kind of <laughs> angled back. It was like chopper style or yeah, something. Yeah, I, like I guess you call it a chopper style bar. It's not really under seat steering because it's, you know, it's, it's right on top of the bars. I think on most recumbents you would call that. I think I was that... talking to Josh. That's, what, okay. that's why the confusion. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I think on most recumbents you would call this under seat steering. Mm -hmm. um, but the way this bike is built, mostly because of the large tires you're sitting a little farther back than yeah a lot of it's a little more upright so too it's... yeah the, the way that it's set up right now yeah i found that to be comfortable sometimes you you're so far back and your head's kind of you know it bouncing around like that yeah the, the handlebars are a little unique on that bike okay and we've got the external controller box so this is something of like this this wasn't a purpose-built electric bike the cables aren't internally routed or anything you can see them you know kind of bundled up right here but if if you buy it from these guys you know electrictrek.com then it's fairly well zip tied and, and kept out of the way you know if you just at first glance it seems more like a purpose-built electric bike the team has worked out all the kinks that kind of stuff and um, you know I appreciate that so let's get back into the other e-bike specific parts um, having 12 magnets on that that cadence sensor up there means it's going to be a little bit more responsive starting and stopping but at any time you can override it by pulling either one of the whooshing brake levers they have a motor inhibitor built in and they also have this parking brake switch so see it's kind of like locked down so the bike's not going to roll away on us which i really appreciate pretty easy access to that trigger throttle got a grip shifter on the right for those eight speeds in the back and then three chain rings up front fairly easy easy enough to reach um you know the display button pad right there I think that's that's pretty good. You know, I mentioned the the boom kind of slides out. The seat is adjustable. The tires, just getting a close up on those. I've got to say, I really appreciate just the suspension. I mean, that to me, that that kind of makes it. It adds a lot of excitement and and just just the comfort. If you're going to be going further, if you're going faster, it's nice to have. Do you feel like there's anything to add? I don't, I don't want to miss anything here. There's a lot to say. Yeah, I think you've covered it pretty well. The it's it's a really unique trike, and it's it's a lot of fun on road and off road. Yeah. You put a little more air in the tires, and it rolls really nicely. A lot of people wonder with the fat tires how they do on the road, but it's it's really kind of great. Even if you, if you have like a pothole or something, it oh, just yeah. eats it right up. Um, but uh, it, that that's a good point. I sorry, I don't want to no. like over here we have the what's this one called? It's kind of the, the traditional. The traditional, traditional. Yeah, this is just a an electric tricycle and these have 24-inch wheels, right? Yep. Okay, and so you look at that and you're like, okay, you know, the larger the wheel, usually it's a little more comfortable. It can kind of span potholes and yep. cracks a little easier. Yep. So you're not just like bouncing around, falling into them. Um, and this one, it's called 20 inch wheels, but when you add the 20, you add the four inch wide tires, it ends up being kind of similar. Yeah, yeah it's almost as big. Yeah, that's, that's really kind of neat. Um, well, it might be time to, to just hop on and show this thing in action. I might hop on, you could you could follow me a little yeah. ways and then we could trade off because it's fun yeah. to see, you know, a third person. That sounds great. First things first, gotta unhook that parking brake. There we go. Now I'm free rolling. I'm up in the level five assist. I might just kinda move move it a little bit. And I'm on I'm going up a little bit of a hill right here, so I'm I'm gonna use the throttle. There we go. Just gets it rolling. Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, a little bit bouncy just because the big tires makes it kind of fun. that if you let off the uh, throttle I, I guess the 
connection to the motor goes out and it sort of says you're going zero miles per hour. See like this, just coasting, goes to zero. But as soon as you activate the throttle again, it goes back up and you get that accurate readout. Here we go. <laughs> So you got your back here. You can see the suspension. Hopefully you can see the motor. I also wanted to show you what the charger looks like. It's got this nice aluminum case. It's only about a pound and a half and it's three amps. So it's gonna charge the battery, you know, three to four hours. Maybe not take as long as some of the other ones out there and just be a little bit tougher if you toss it in your bag, which is kind of nice. I think I'm gonna have to trade this off to Alec to get the full, full view. <laughs> Wanna do a little off-road? <laughs> yeah, how'd that go? That looked like fun. You know, you try to film and steer and do the whole thing. I think it's gonna be more fun if, uh, if you hop on and I'll, I'll just, I'll trail you a little yeah. bit. Yeah, some of the, those shots of the, of the tires look pretty cool. Yeah, it's neat to get up close. I, I, what do you want to we've got this really cool area that's kind of gravelly <laughs> and then you know I don't want to break it but it seems pretty tough I think it'll be fine we'll put it back to you can get all the parts individually so well that's if we the break other thing we'll put it, back together. <laughs> it is very modular that's yeah. that's one of the benefits of being a kit and and it's not even like a proprietary battery or anything right. we've got a Molex adapter some people talk about these companies where it's yeah. like you know, if the company goes out of business or yeah. if, if you want to replace a battery, it's like a thousand bucks yeah. versus, you know, a little bit more. Yeah, we still do parts for like the earliest kits that we sold. If, if anybody ever needs parts, we can usually help them out. And the frame, you know, from JMB, you can even get like the rear part of the frame separate from the front part of the frame. Oh, really? So if you're doing like really serious off-roading or something and you break the back, you don't need a whole new frame. You just get the get the back part and bolt it on. Good to know. As far as frames go, this is a kind of a one size frame, but with all the adjustable boom and the yeah. and the seat, it's yeah, a little yeah. bit more accommodating. Three spots for the seat. It comes and in. You've got uh, all the travel on the boom. Yeah. So it should fit. It should fit pretty much any normal folks. And I'll have those details and the specs back at the website, um, and I'll you know I'll link to the official site for this yeah. too. But uh, let's let's do it. Yeah. Let I'm me gonna, know what to do. I'll be. I think just have it's fun and here. I'll uh, <laughs> I'll just follow you and get some shots. Sounds good. Yep. Be careful, Alec. Oh, uh, I'll try. This bike's a lot faster than mine. Whoa! Do you see that? Look at this. Getting it on two wheels. <laughs> Man, feels kind of unstoppable. Oh boy, we almost caught some air. Look at this. This thing is a blast. Dude, you were on, on two wheels and oh, almost like caught it some look air. Too <laughs> oh man. Let's see, let's try on the gravel, see if I can kind of skid on some gravel. Do some skidding. Okay, let me get over there.
<laughs> nice. Hey, Alec, are you braking independently? Like to? Yeah. Oh, Can you yeah, explain how that works? I think it's the most fun part of these tadpoles, actually. So since you have two front brakes, mm -hmm. if you're turning yeah. and you put on like your inside most brake, it'll stop this wheel quicker than this one. Yeah. So you'll, you'll turn even faster. And if you hit the motor at the same time, you can kind of like fish, <laughs> fish tail, tail a little. And again, this is the top speed. We've kind of got it unlocked and um, just a lot of fun. Thank you so much. Ooh. It's awesome to, I mean, I'm inspired now. I got to get out there and, and ride a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's been a great day for this and a beautiful, just, a, it's beautiful around here. I haven't really spent a lot of time, but it makes me wonder all the trails and different spots that people could go. Yeah. Um, I think that's, that's about it. Of course, I do the full ride up back at the site, uh, but that's the Fat Tad from Sunseeker. You can get this at electrictrike.com and gosh just just have a blast i frequently talk about you know what's it like to receive a bike and you know put it together and stuff this one comes fully built they've got a one-year comprehensive warranty and again they're kind of like a multi-brand company with um you know the e-bike kit stuff and now electrictrike.com they've been doing this for as you said it's been like a decade now yeah. of doing the kits and stuff so yeah. I, I feel like they've done a good job and it's just a you get a really big box uh, <laughs> at the end of the day so for the full ride up on this i'll see you back at the site and of course especially if you're riding on two wheels ride safe absolutely <laughs>